Hi, Sidney Powell, Lynn Wood, and a few additional attorneys filed an election fraud lawsuit in Michigan against the governor, the Secretary of State, and the Michigan Board of State Canvases. The lawsuit seeks injunctions and specific actions be awarded by the U.S. Federal Court. Now, most of the citizens of this country feel that a massive amount of voter fraud occurred during the 2020 election. Fraud for the purpose of helping Joe Biden win. The suit identifies Michigan election laws that were violated and violations of the U.S. Constitution. In particular, the Elections and Electors Clauses and the Equal Protection Clause. The Secretary of State and county election officials arbitrarily formulated rules that were in direct contradiction to Michigan election laws. The U.S. Constitution gives the power to formulate election laws solely to the state legislature, not to the governor, not to the Secretary of State, and certainly not to any county election official. The suit states that the fraud was executed again for the purpose of legally manipulating the election results in order to help Joe Biden win. The suit shows that the number of fraudulent ballots were large enough to impact the election results. In my opinion, the Michigan lawsuit presents a plausible case for election fraud that must be considered seriously by the court. If the court does not take this case seriously, it will be an injustice to the citizens of the state of Michigan and the United States. Joe Biden must also take these lawsuits seriously. He should temper his rush to the White House. His path to it may be blocked, or at least seriously tarnished. The suit identifies fact witnesses and presents expert witness testimony demonstrating that several hundred thousand, that's right, several hundred thousand, illegal, ineligible, duplicate, or purely fictitious votes must be thrown out. Again, enough fraudulent ballots that could have affected the election results. We will go over some of the fraudulent actions identified in the lawsuit. There are many. Here are just two of the lawsuit's experts' findings. Plaintiff's expert witness, Russell James Ramsland, has concluded that Dominion voting machines and software was responsible for the injection or fabrication of 289,866 illegal votes in Michigan that must be disregarded. This is almost twice the number of Mr. Biden's purported lead in the Michigan vote and thus by itself as grounds to set aside the 2020 general election and grant the declaratory and injunctive relief requested by the lawsuit. A report from Dr. Eric Quinnell analyzing the abnormal turnout figures in Wayne and Oakland counties, showing that Biden gained nearly 100% and frequently more than 100% of all new voters in certain townships or precincts over 2016 results, and thus indicated that nearly 87,000 likely fraudulent votes from these precincts existed. Now, the suit also shows that election workers illegally forged, added, removed, or otherwise altered information on ballots. The qualified voter file, also known as a registered voter file, and other voting records, including fraudulently adding tens of thousands of new ballots and or new voters to the qualified voter file in two separate batches on November 4th, 2020, the day after the election, all or nearly all of which were votes for Joe Biden. Forging voter information and fraudulently adding new voters to the qualified voter file, in particular, when a ballot, a mail-in ballot, with the voter's name could not be found in the registered voter file, the election worker then assigned the ballot to a random name already in the qualified voter file, to a person who had not voted and recorded these results 
as the voter as having a birth date of 11900. That's right. 11900. So these voters were 120 years old. Or well, these randomly made up voters were 120 years old. That's right. A ballot with the name of an unregistered or unknown person was then assigned a name of a registered voter at random and counted as a valid vote. And you know it was a vote for Biden. Now, where could these ballots have come from? That's a question. The election workers also changed dates on absentee ballots received after 8 p.m. on election day to indicate that such ballots were received before the deadline. Election workers committed several additional categories of violations of election law to enable them to accept and count other illegal, ineligible, or duplicate ballots, or arbitrarily reject Trump or Republican ballots. That's right. Arbitrarily reject Trump or Republican ballots, including permitting illegal double voting by persons that had voted by absentee ballot and in person, counting ineligible ballots, and in many cases, multiple times, counting ballots without signatures, all without attempting to match signatures, and ballots without postmarks, pursuant to direct instructions from the county election officials. The election voters also counted spoiled ballots. A spoiled ballot is a ballot that has been marked incorrectly and is not to be counted by election officials. But in Michigan, they did. Now, also, unsecured ballots arrived at the TCF Center, the Detroit Convention Center loading garage, not in sealed ballot boxes, without any chain of custody, and without envelopes after the 8 p.m. election day deadline. In particular, the tens of thousands of ballots that arrived on November 4th, 2020. And the election workers accepted and counted ballots knowingly from deceased voters. The suit also shows Republican election challenges were denied access to the TCF Center, the Detroit Convention Center, where all Wayne County, Michigan ballots were processed and counted. Election workers denied Republican poll watches at the TCF Center meaningful access to view ballot handling, processing, or counting, and locked credential challenges out of the counting rooms so they could not observe the process, during which time tens of thousands of ballots were processed. Election officials and workers engaged in a systemic pattern of harassment, intimidation, and even physical removal of Republican election challenges, or just locking them out of the TCF Center. The election workers systematically discriminated against Republican poll watchers and favored Democrat poll watchers. The election officials ignored or refused to record Republican challenges to the violations outlined. The election officials refused to prevent Republican poll challenges to observe ballot duplication and other instances where they allowed ballots to be duplicated by hand without allowing poll challenges to check if the duplication was accurate. And the election officials unlawfully coached voters to vote for Joe Biden and to vote a straight Democratic ticket, including by going over to the voting booths with voters in order to watch them vote and coach them for whom to vote. Now, the suit seeks similar remedies to the suit that Powell and Lynn filed in Georgia. Plaintiffs Powell, Lynn, and others seek, one, an order directing Secretary of State Benson, Governor Whitmer, and the Board of State Canvases and Wayne County to decertify the election results. 
Two, an order enjoining Secretary Benson and Governor Whitmer from transmitting, from transmitting the currently certified election results to the Electoral College. Three, an order requiring Governor Whitman to transmit certified election results that state that President Donald Trump is the winner of the election. Four, an immediate order to impound all voting machines and software in Michigan for expert inspection by the plaintiffs. Five, an order that no votes received or tabulated by machines that were not certified as required by federal and state law be counted. Six, a declaratory judgment declaring that Michigan's failed system of signature verification violates the electors and elections clause by creating a de facto abolition of the signature verification requirement. Seven, a declaratory judgment declaring that current certified election results violate the due process clause of the U.S. Constitution. Eight, a declaratory judgment declaring that mail-in and absentee ballot fraud must be remedied with a full manual recount or statistically valid sampling that properly verifies the signatures on absentee ballot envelopes and that invalidates the certified results if the recount or sampling analysis shows a sufficient number of ineligible absentee ballots were counted. Nine, an emergency declaratory judgment that voting machines be seized and impounded immediately for a forensic audit by plaintiff's experts. Ten, a declaratory judgment declaring absentee ballot fraud occurred in violation of constitutional rights, Michigan election laws, and other state laws. 11. A permanent injunction prohibiting the Governor and Secretary of State from transmitting the currently certified results to the Electoral College based on the overwhelming evidence of election tampering. 12. An immediate production of 48 hours of security camera recording of all rooms used in the voting process at the TCF Center for November 3rd and November 4th. Now, the lawsuit shows actual fraud being committed that affected more than enough votes to impact the results of the election. And I think that a just court would be obligated to rule in favor of Powell and Wood. Well, I hope this helps. Have a good day.